Welcome everyone to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tonight's site of an important ACC football game and the perpetuation of a meaningful and emotional tradition here on the Boston College campus. Tonight, Malik Rozier returns as the starting quarterback for Miami after losing that job a month ago. BC has played its last two games without star running back A.J. Dillon. He returns from an ankle sprain tonight for the fifth annual Red Bandana game played in honor of an American hero, Wells Crowther. When I heard the news that the tower had come down, I knew in my heart of hearts that Wells was gone. I still weep every day for my son, at some point of every day. Without him, I wouldn't be here. He saved my life. This symbol of absolutely the most pure form of compassion and love. It's all right here in this red bandana. He represents what BC is all about, service for all. He laid his life down to save others. That's what it's all about. Such an honor and a thrill for our football program to have the Crowthers here to give them a game ball. This game means an awful lot to our program. The sacrifices that Wells made for our country. We're so proud of every one of you. Every one of you. So thank you so much. The Boston College community proud of Jefferson and Allison Crowther's son forever. So many people far beyond this campus will be grateful to Wells forever. The former lacrosse player in 1999 BC grad lost his life while saving at least a dozen others. His trademark, a red bandana, he carried it with him every day from age six. Coach Steve Adazio spoke passionately about one of the mottos spoken frequently here at BC, men and women for others. He wants his players to live a life of service. He's told them nobody could ever embody that more than Wells Crowther did. And the Eagles take the field for a very important game. They're five and two, their best start through seven games in Adazio's six years as head coach. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Outback Steakhouse. Tonight from Alumni Stadium, an ACC battle. Miami and Boston College in the same conference, but they haven't met since 2012, each 5-2 and two overall. They're in opposite divisions of the ACC, both with title hopes. Boston College 2-1 and one in league play, trailing Clemson, but the Tigers come here in November. Miami at 2-1 and one with a win tonight would move into a tie for the Coastal League with Virginia and Virginia Tech. Welcome to Boston College on this special night. I'm Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted, delighted to have you with us. Joined in just a moment by Holly Rowe. Todd, we're excited every weekend when we get to broadcast college football. Tonight, I think everybody on our crew, I know everybody on our crew, deeply honored yeah. to pay tribute to a great American hero and be a part of this special night. Every now and then we get to do a game where it just feels bigger than the X's and O's. And tonight's one of those games. I know for me, I've done a lot of reflecting this weekend as a man reflecting what would I do if I was in the same shoes that Wells Crowther was in? And then as a dad of four boys, how would I feel if my son had done something as admirable and courageous as Wells Crowther did? So special night. And with an eye on the football game, an important game for each team, as we just noted. For Miami, they go back to Malik Rozier, yeah. their starting quarterback last year. At the beginning of this year, they played in Nicosi Perry the last three games, but they've gone back to Rozier, the fifth-year senior tonight. Yeah, I think they feel like his experience, his maturity can be the answer for him to lead the way. They've been very good on defense, inconsistent on offense, and Malik's numbers have not been great, but the one number that matters the most, pretty good. He's 14-4 and four as a starting quarterback. And when Miami's on defense, job one, tackling this man, A.J. Dillon, it's not easy to do. Yeah. 
out the last two games with the ankle. They're not sure about his status tonight, but he's going to give it a go. Yeah, he's looked good running in practice, but he hasn't been tackled in four weeks. That's the big question. But this guy is special because he's a combination of three things. Number one, power. He runs with great physicality at 250 pounds. He has very quick feet in the hole, so he can make people miss quickly. And then on top of that, he has legitimate top end speed to run away from people when he gets to the second level of the defense. As we head down to the field, Holly Rowe was clear both coaches wanted to make sure the players knew about the meaning of tonight's game. That's right, John. Steve Adazio from Boston College said every new year he wants to make sure his players understand the meaning of this game. So he starts early in the week. Every day he tells them a little bit more. And today he showed a video from Wells Crowther's parents to the team to make sure they understand just what it is that they're playing for tonight. And I spoke with their quarterback, Anthony Brown. He told me that that day Wells Crowther went back in when he couldn't, he didn't have to. This is a significant remembrance. Zach Allen said that he is the epitome of a BC man. He acts with integrity. He served others. And even Mark Rick, the Miami coach, said that he talked to his team about the importance of this red bandana game. He said Wells Crowther was a real American hero. I wanted my guys to know about it. He said, I believe we can be inspired too. Sean. All right. Thank you, Holly. There's Zach Allen. Outstanding defensive end for Boston College. Mark Rick in his third season. As head coach at his alma mater, terrific a year ago, 10 wins, was the ACC coach of the year. They started the season ranked number eight in the country and have just fallen out of the top 25 after their loss in their last game at Virginia. Both teams off a of bye week, sparse crowd as we get started here on a chilly night. And there is another sporting event going on in the country tonight. The folks in Boston are interested in. We'll see if the World Series impacts the crowd. Boston College. Won the toss and deferred, so Danny Longman's kickoff brought back by DJ Dallas across the 25 yard line. So here's Malik Rozier, fifth year senior out of Mobile, Alabama. Todd noted the record as a starter, three and one this year in the first four games of the year. Last year led them to that 10 win season, but the season ended poorly. Yes. To the point, Todd, where he had to earn his job again in spring practice. Yes. Well, I would expect that Mark Rick to call some easy throws for him early in this game. Try to get him comfortable right away as the starting quarterback again. 6 1, 212 pounder. He's a dual threat and hurt you with his feet. Travis Homer's their leading rusher. And he's ahead for three to the 30 yard line. Zach Allen, the first of many tackles he'll make tonight, the senior from New Canaan, Connecticut. And the Canes get up to the line quickly. Well, teams expect to see some different looks from the other with the benefit of the bye week for each. Boston College blitzes straight up the middle. Well picked up. Rozier on target. And Lawrence Cager doing everything he could but could not get away from Hamp Cheevers. He's very near the first down. And on the far sideline, they're moving the chains. It is. A first down according to the officials at the 37 yard line. That's going to be a battle all night for these BC corners. They're both tough kids, but not very big and Cager a very big physical wide receiver. Three receivers spread the formation. Here's Travis Homer. Powerful running back at 205 pounds taken down by Max Richardson after a gain of three to the 40. Miami's last game they lost to Virginia and if you take out a 70 yard run by Travis Homer they averaged under three yards per carry so Mark Rick very interested in trying to get that running game off to a faster start tonight. BC creeping up toward the line of scrimmage. Expect to see a number of blitzes from Boston College tonight. There's the linebacker Max Richardson again stuffing the run for no game third down and seven. Sometimes you blitz to rush the passer. Sometimes you blitz to stop a run. That was a run blitz perfectly timed by Max Richardson in the hole. Miami going very quickly. Didn't look like BC was completely lined up on defense, but they stopped the play short of the first down. Brevin Jordan, the talented freshman tight end, knocked out of bounds by Will Harris. Now this BC defense has some NFL prospects on it. Zach Allen with the defensive end, and that guy right there, Will Harris, who made that play. 6'2", 210 pounds, senior, captain, very physical, rangy guy. Stopped Brevin Jordan short of the first down. 
There's Zach Fiegels to punt to a dangerous return man, Michael Walker. Last year he led the nation in combined kickoff and punt return yardage, and he leads it this year as well. Very high. Bounce just outside the 20. And good work by Fiegels, the son of Jeff Fiegels, longtime outstanding NFL punter and a Miami alum. So here comes Boston College on offense for the first time tonight, led by the redshirt sophomore from Cliffwood, New Jersey, Anthony Brown. And like Rozier, a guy who can hurt you with his feet as well. 59% completions this year. And Eagle fans delighted to see A.J. Dillon lined up for the first snap. And they get him started right away. Tripped up at the 37-yard line, maybe a touchdown-saving tackle by the safety Sheldrick Redwine. All the tight formation suggested inside run, but again, Dylan has top-end speed, so if you don't pursue the edge, he's going to go. He is a legit 4-5-40 runner, according to Brian White, the veteran running back coach. He got stopped that time. For a loss by the outstanding safety Jaquan Johnson, one of the best in the country. The thing I'm curious to see is how does he handle low tackles? Brown on the rollout on target for a first down. Out to the 48 yard line, Tommy Sweeney, the tight end. They love the tight ends, they play multiple tight end sets throughout. They play multiple tight ends, and they also run with tempo. That's very unusual. Most teams that play tempo use three, four, five wide receivers. This is a pro-style power offense that goes quickly. It's unique. Kobe White on the end around, taken down by Zach McLeod. Loss of one on the play. McLeod, part of that group of three-year starters at linebacker, one of the best cores in the country for Manny Diaz, the defensive coordinator. The guy that BC has to be concerned about right there, Gerald Willis, number nine. He's had a tremendous first half of the year. Screen to the near side. For Abadrizi, another one of those tight ends with his sixth catch of the year, and it's another Boston College first down. That's BC's pass offense. It all goes off of their run. It's play action, it's bootleg, it's screen, but it all begins with that power run game. And a flinch on the right end of the line by Tommy Sweeney. False start, offense number 89. Five yard penalty, first down. Very important for Boston College to stay on schedule against this Miami defense. Coming into the game, Miami's defense, best in the ACC, second in the country, only giving up 237 yards per game. And they are especially difficult to deal with on third down and long yardage situations. So staying ahead of schedule, ahead of the chains, very important for BC tonight. Travis Levy in a running back. They set up a screen to Sweeney. He got spun around down to the 39-yard line in the arms of Romeo Finley. Outstanding defense for Miami this season. Second in total defense behind only Michigan. Best in the country on third down and tackles for loss. And the turnover chain out in full effect again. They said they'd go into the bag of tricks. Smith, the former quarterback, back to Anthony Brown. Showing his running abilities down inside the 15. Jeff Smith was a former quarterback. Transitioned to wide receiver in 2016. This is not uncomfortable for him. He looked very smooth throwing that ball back to Anthony Brown. And then Anthony Brown showing that he can run with the ball in his hand. Smith started three games at quarterback for the Eagles in 2015. Michael Walker inside the 10, a gain of three. And again, they line up quickly. Yeah. Steve Adazio said, we're going to go as fast as we can possibly go. Well, now that they have substituted, it will slow it down enough for Miami to match personnel if they want. But again, they use multiple tight ends. Right now, they have three of them in the ballgame, but they're still trying to play up tempo. 
can move them around as full backs and H backs. Ray Martin is the fullback, number 86. Brown running out of room. Throws it away, it appeared, at the feet of A.J. Dillon. And this is the first third down play that BC has faced. They've done a good job of converting on first and second down. Again, Miami best in the country on third down. And this one, they can still get a first down without scoring a touchdown here. There's 20.8% the opponents on third down against Miami. That leads the country. Way better than 40% on defense last year for Miami, which was 75th. It's been an emphasis from day one of fall practice. Brown, touchdown, Jeff Smith. And Boston College, an impressive opening drive. and Lichtenberg on for the extra point for the Eagles. And it's good. Jeff Smith threw a completion on that 88 yard drive and then scored the touchdown. His second receiving touchdown of the year. Eagles on top, seven to nothing on red bandana night on the Heights. You're watching the ACC on ESPN from Chile Alumni Stadium, beautiful Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, about six miles from downtown Boston. Red Bandana Night in honor and memory of Wells Crowther and his parents here, as always, on Red Bandana Night, Allison and Jefferson Crowther. Here's DJ Dallas bringing back a Danny Longman kickoff. And he's across midfield and well into Boston College territory. Although now it looks like they're going to mark him out. Back at the BC 45 yard line, Will Harris saved the touchdown for Boston College. Well, let's take a look back at the BC touchdown. Great execution. Now, this is White. He's going to be the receiver that gets the touchdown, but watch. Kobe White run inside. That affects this defender. Tight end Adrizi goes outside. That affects both these defenders. And then White. And then you've got the beautiful route by Jeff Smith coming back inside on a little delay. He attacked the outside leverage of the defender. Outstanding execution out of the three receiver set. And a 52 yard kickoff return by DJ Dallas. His longest of the season. Longest of the year for the Miami Hurricanes. He'll split time at running back with Travis Homer. He's catching his breath on the sideline. They marked it now at the 44. Malik Rozier swings it out. All kinds of running room for Homer. And he's down inside the 27 yard line. A gain of 17 for Miami. Isaiah McDuffie, the tackle. Really nice read by Rozier, not forcing it downfield, dumping it off to Homer, and uh, a missed assignment inside somewhere with the BC defense. And that's unusual. They've played outstanding defense this year. Pass deflected and almost intercepted. Intended for D. Wiggins, and Hamp Cheevers had his eyes on it. He's already picked off four this year. Well, this has to be a catch if Wiggins. It's a little bit behind him, but he's stumbling a little bit out of his break. It's almost intercepted, and, and Rozier took a big hit from Zach Allen right as he got rid of the football, but that is a ball that, that should be caught. These two teams tied for the ACC lead in interceptions, 11 apiece. They're also tied for the lead in sacks. They couldn't get Rozier, and now he shows off his running ability down to the 16 yard line a pickup of 11 and a first down i thought last year when malik rozier was playing his best he was doing this he was running the football some on third down some by design some just when the pocket broke down 
and that's a valuable asset when you get into this part of the field if your quarterback has the good instincts as a runner. It makes it that much more difficult for an aggressive defense like BC. Here's Nicosi Perry, the red shirt freshman who started the last three games. Rozier replaced him early in the second quarter in their last game at Virginia. Quick pop up the middle. DJ Dallas about eight more. And Miami looking to answer the Boston College score midway through the quarter. Really nice response so far by Miami. And I think the offensive line, they've used different combinations. They've had some inconsistent play up there, but so far in the ballgame, doing a nice job protecting their quarterback and opening up some running lanes for Travis Homer and DJ Dallas. Rozier, design quarterback run, and Boston College ready for it. And then a little late polish by Max Richardson along the sideline. McDuffie had him wrapped up, and Richardson finished him off. Richardson is a physical kid who can really run and hit. You see right towards the end of the play, still in play, but hit him high. That's uh, you got to be careful hitting up into that area, that head and neck area. Third down and two. Miami also much improved on third down on offense this year over a season ago. A lot of pointing. BC indicating that somebody flinched on the right end of that Full offensive start. line. Offense, number nine. Five yard penalty, third down. Brevin Jordan did. Brevin Jordan is really a good looking young football player, true freshman out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Bishop Gorman High School. Their leading receiver coming into the ball game tonight. Really talented guy. Number one ranked tight end in the country coming out of high school last year. Team captain at Bishop, Bishop Gorman. He was a part last year of their ninth straight state title team. Third and seven, they can get a first down at the six. A BC blitz. Rozier with time. Back corner of the end zone. Daryl Langham. They're incomplete. Boy, tremendous effort again. This is going to be the challenge for BC in this part of the field. And I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't get reviewed. Throw to those big receiver get against the smaller cornerbacks. Langham goes up for the football. Oh, he's in. Man. The right foot was in if he had control of the football. Yeah, the right foot is in. Does he have possession the of the ball? The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The play is under review. Hamp Cheever's hand is in between the two hands of Langham on the football. I think that's the question. By the time he gains possession of it, is he out of bounds? The right foot landed in bounds. The left foot landed out of bounds. And where did he have full possession of the football is the question. But again, Langham is six foot four. Cager is six foot five. These two cornerbacks, Torres and Cheevers, are both around 5'9". Beautiful throw by Rozier, giving his guy a chance. There's three hands on the football right there. Yeah, no question the right foot is fully in bounds, even when the heel comes down, but did he have possession of the ball? Let's bring in our rules expert. Long time on the field, Big Ten referee Bill Lamagne. What do you think, Bill? I see control of the football, the right foot or the foot down inbounds, and he maintains control after the left foot comes down. I go touchdown yeah. on this. I think this is indisputable video evidence for a touchdown. It's a beautiful throw. You want to throw this in a place where your guy can go make a play and still be in bounds or have a chance to land in bounds. And then a nice job by Langham going up to the high point to make the catch against the smaller corner Cheevers. Malik Rozier looks sharp tonight. He does. So we were not that impressed against LSU and admittedly playing against a great defense. A lot of their struggles at the end of last year when they finished with three losses blamed on him. After review, the receiver had possession of the ball and his right foot came down in the end zone. Therefore, Touchdown. Of 13 yards, Rozier to Daryl Langham. Fifth year senior to fifth year senior, the second touchdown of the year for Langham. I think it's a credit to the character of Malik Rozier, too. He could have packed it in when he got replaced a couple weeks ago. That seems he's to be the trend. He's a fifth year senior. He's, it's, it's his last go round. 
and he stayed ready. And he obviously looks ready to play tonight. Bubba backs at the extra point. And we asked him how he felt about being replaced. He said, well, I'm in my fifth year, so I can't transfer out. But at least that possibility had crossed his mind if it had been an option. Exciting start to this important ACC game here in Boston. Red bandana night here on the Boston College campus. Last Saturday, the 14th annual Wells Remy Crowther Red Bandana 5K run here on campus. In conjunction with the Crowther Charitable Trust, more than 1,100 runners helping celebrate the life of Wells Crowther. Coming student here at BC is given a red bandana and told the story of Wells Crowder when they arrive on campus. Bubba backs us kickoff to Michael Walker, and he's chopped down at the 24. A number of annual traditions and activities. This one unique on July 16th in Central Park. The Crowder family with Volunteers honored Wells' memory. They tied together 10,920 red bandanas, set the world record. That's 2.2 miles of bandanas that represented the height in feet of both World Trade Center towers, where Wells Crowther lost his life. A.J. Dillon on first down for B.C. And we know for sure, Todd, that he saved, helped save at least a dozen. It was the red bandana that helped people whose lives he saved identify the fact that it That's was right. him. When the story got out that he always had the red bandana with him, some of the survivors saw his picture and said, yes, that was him. He kept running up to the 78th story of the World Trade Center South Tower where he worked to help move people down. He could have left the building. He did not. And many lives were saved as a result. That's the reason these people proudly wear that red bandana. Dillon carried for a first down, and BC goes quickly now in a tie game. Anthony Brown put it into traffic and is very lucky that yes. one didn't get picked off. Instead, it's a catch. Yeah, unbelievably so, it's a catch. The throw was late and kind of back towards the middle, and Jaquan Johnson, oh. who is the ruling on the field, is a completed pass. The best First player down. on this Miami defense, it literally goes right through his arms. I'm not sure anybody in the crowd realized Chris Garrison caught it either. There really was very little cheering. BC comes back quickly. Here's Jeff Smith, the versatile athlete. Knocked out of the 50. Sheldrick Redwine, the safety's been busy already. The corners for Miami and their coverage guys, they are gonna win the matchup on the perimeter with the wide receivers from BC. So BC has to do a lot of different things creative wise to get the ball to the perimeter and spread the football around other than just A.J. Dillon. This could be a pass as well. <laughs> they said they were going into the bag of tricks and they do it successfully again. Smith to Travis Levy inside the 20 yard line. Trajan Bandy, the tackle, a gain of 30. Well, this is the second time now we've seen it. They fake to Levy. It's Jeff Smith again, the former quarterback. He waits for Levy to clear on the out, on the go route. And another big play. The fake to A.J. Dillon. And the pass over the head of Cora Bedrizi. Jeff Smith might want Anthony Brown's job. He might say, <laughs> give me that quarterback job back. I can still sling it with the best of them. Well, the thing I loved about him on both of those plays is there was no panic. That one he had to wait. He had to wait for Levy to clear the defense, and he didn't panic, and he stood in there and made a nice throw. Under center, Brown, A.J. Dillon uses that speed to turn the corner. At 250 pounds, he can move, and he's a yard short of the first down. And see, that's what you don't normally see a running back do to a Miami defense. So Miami's got tremendous speed on their defense. Dillon was able to get to the edge and turn the corner on this very fast defense. So they bring in David Bailey. Steve Dazio calls a thumper. He's another 250-pounder. Not quite as fast as Dillon 
but strong and tough and the BC coaches said we want to see if Miami wants to tackle these two 250 pound backs for four quarters on a 40 degree night right. and, and that's that's going to be the challenge because as long as the game is close then BC is going to stay with that plan of continuing to slam the football in there with these big backs and then going play action off of the run. First and goal from outside the five. Bailey, true freshman, did a nice job helping fill the void when Dylan was out for those two games with the ankle injury. In fact, Bailey rushed for over 100, 112 in their last game of the win here against Louisville. We have to wonder also with A.J. Dillon, even if he's 100% healthy, even if the, the ankle feels good, his conditioning, game conditioning, they're going to have to try to keep him fresh for the entire game. Injured in a game against Temple just less than a month ago. Brown wanted to pass, but has all kinds of running room. And a go-ahead touchdown for Boston College. Touchdown drive to start the game. Now a 77-yarder capped on a five-yard run by the cornerback Brown. Really nice read by Anthony Brown. His left tackle, Aaron Montero, did a beautiful job just taking Joe Jackson up the field on that speed rush and left a big void to the left. And Anthony Brown saw it and took advantage of it. Watch Anthony Brown see things open up to his left. Get after the quarterback, those Oklahoma State Cowboys. Danny Longman kicks off. DJ Dallas, a nice return last time. And another good one. He's out near the 40. Here's Holly. Well, after that hard start, it looks like Malik Rozier will come back out for Miami at quarterback. Mark Rick told Todd and I on the field before the game, don't be surprised if you see Nikozi Perry on the third or fourth series. It has been a back and forth all year. Perry was suspended for the first game. Rozier started the first four and then said he was blindsided when he was benched. Perry started the next three. Rozier started tonight. It's been very back and forth. Mark Crick said Malik hasn't really done anything wrong, but Nikozi was getting better, and we want to see what he can do. He may still come into this ballgame. Yeah, he may come in, but right now, Mark Rick's got a pretty hot guy in Malik Rozier, and I don't think he wants to mess with him. 35-yard kickoff return. This might be a double pass. D.J. Dallas trying to give B.C. a taste of its own medicine, and the receiver, D. Wiggins, got ripped down. Yeah, now, I thought that could have been a pass interference easily, but if Will Harris would have known where the football was, it would have been an easy interception. Because DJ Dallas got hit or the ball got tipped yeah, got right tipped. as it was That's thrown. why there's no flag. Okay, there's the tip. That's why there's no flag, and that's why the ball looked like a punt. And if Will Harris would have known where the football was, that was an easy possible interception for BC. Kevin Bletzer, the linebacker, deflected it. BC showing blitz again. An aggressive defense yes. coordinated by Jim Reed. 45th year of college coaching. DJ Dallas stopped by Coach Reed's defense at the 41 yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Zach Allen, the first one there. I mean, this guy is a big guy, six foot five, 285 pounds. And you normally don't see a defensive lineman get the numbers of tackles that he has. He had 100 tackles last year, kind of on the same kind of pace again in 2018. And pressure. Homer with work to do. And he didn't quite get there. Did well to get within two yards of the line to make. Taj Amir Torres, the cornerback, tripped him up. And now Mark Richt will have a decision to make on fourth down and two. And after some consideration, the punt team comes out. We approach a minute and a half to go in the opening quarter. Good as Mark Rick knows his defense has been this season, 
They're not off to a great start against BC tonight, so that's why he's saying, I'm not going to give them a short field if we don't convert here. Let's punt the football and uh, make BC go the long way. So the kind of field position you sometimes see a fake. Eagles is going to kick it away. Out of bounds inside the 20. Well, it is college football, and Anthony Brown, the quarterback for BC, Todd, really represents yes. what you want in a student athlete. Double major here at Boston College, in addition to his exploits on the football field. First charge, timeout, Boston College. We'll talk more about the BC quarterback, Steve Adazio, when we come back. Back at BC, where the Eagles lead 14 to 7. We talked about their personnel groups. This is 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends. They do a lot of things with this. They'll run the football, they'll line them up in different positions, they'll play with tempo, and then the play action or the bootleg pass off of it. It's been a very effective and a very unique offense with that package. AJ Dillon carries for a yard. Michael Jackson made the tackle. And we asked Steve Vidazio where he came up with this. As you said, it's unique. Power pro-style football, but up-tempo. Most of these college up-tempo teams are spread teams. BC was a spread team when he first got here. They really were trying to find an identity. There's a completion to Hunter Long, redshirt freshman. And Steve, when he was at Florida as a coordinator, they played against Oklahoma. He admired how they had a power running game, but could still play up tempo. Heard you with the run and the pass. He talked a lot to Kevin Wilson and the offensive coordinator. And this works for them. They're a school yeah. where they can recruit tight ends. They've had great tight ends throughout the yeah. years. They feel like they can recruit big offensive linemen, multiple tight ends, and, and a couple guys who can throw the football. Long limped off. They're very deep at tight end. And there's another, Jake Burt, a junior from just up the road on the North Shore of Boston in Linfield, Mass., his fourth catch of the year. Well, Scott Leffler's doing a great job calling the game right now as a play caller. A lot of throws on first down. He said he wants to avoid third down against this defense because that's when they really make their move. And they have done a great job of throwing on early downs and not putting too much pressure on Anthony Brown. The end of the first and he's quarter. playing with confidence right now. And a beautifully called game by Leffler. That's the second best defense in the country in total yardage coming in. Boston College, 209 yards in the first quarter. Well, during the break between quarters, Boston College honoring the 1983 team led by Doug Flutie, who a year later would win the Heisman Trophy. That was the legendary coach Jack Picknell. Looks great at age 80. I'll tell you what, I remember that guy in 1982, the year we won the national championship on this field. Doug Flutie threw for 560 yards against our defense. We won the game, but he was unbelievable. Well, you weren't there in 83, were you? Nope. BC won. That was part of their nine win season, for which they're being honored tonight. They went to the Liberty Bowl that year. Tommy Sweeney, the intended receiver, Romeo Finley, broke it up. And really, the game that everybody remembers in this rivalry, and this is the 30th meeting, was the next year. Yes. The, the Flutie to fail and Hail Mary to give BC the upset on the last play of the game down at the old Orange Bowl. That's a great Miami team. On second and ten, A.J. Dillon says, get out of my way. Tried to chop him down low. He's doing everything to protect that ankle. Sheldrick Redwine made the tackle. Flag down at the 38. Holding offense, number nine. Ten-yard penalty, second down. Kobe White, a wide receiver, guilty of the penalty. In Boston College, using those multiple tight end formations, they keep everything in tight, and then they try to bounce the ball to the perimeter with A.J. Dillon. And White just too much of the jersey out there blocking on the edge. And this is where B.C. has to be smart with the football. It's second and long. 
A safe play here, maybe even a screen to get some of that yardage back. And there it is, out in the flat. Lots of running room for Dillon. And he's taken down by Redwine, about a yard short of the first down. I love it. A.J. Dillon coming into the game, even though he's missed the last two, that's only his fifth reception on the season. They have not shown the tendency to throw it to him. They throw it to him there, and he almost picks up the first down. Crowding the line, Miami. Dillon chopped down, but he has the first down. And a really nice game being called yeah. by Scott Leffler, the offensive coordinator from your neck of the woods. Yep. Barberton, Ohio. They're three for three on third downs against the best third down team in college football. And it's because they have managed the early downs extremely well. And another razzle-dazzle play that gets them about five. There is Scott behind the pole. The Purple Magic, you yes. said, right? Of yes. Barberton, Ohio. Michigan man from the same hometown as Bo Schembler. The Schembeck, he's a little upset right now. John Makovic, also from Barberton, yeah. Ohio. What's that, about 15 miles away from where yeah, you are? Yeah, just about that. In that UCLA area, Upper Canton, Lower Akron. <laughs> Anthony Brown's pass a little bit too low Cora Badrizi We're talking about Brown Double major communications also advanced psychology and human development and You know Steve Adazio talks a lot about What it means to be a BC football player be a BC man? Yeah Brown personifies it. Well, and I think he took so much accountability for how he played and how he handled the situation at Purdue earlier in the year. It was a poor game by him, and he's really grown from it. Well, they were ranked for the first time in years, and Anthony Brown admitted, I played poorly, and our team didn't have our intensity. He said, if we're going to win, we have to play with intensity all the time. For whatever reason, we just didn't have it that day. And through four interceptions that game, very uncharacteristic because he's had a in that regard he's been very good 14 touchdowns four interceptions coming into the game today they were all in the same game there's fourth and five Steve Adazio said anything outside the 20 will probably go for it if it's manageable on fourth down and they complete the pass to Sweeney he gets knocked around like a pinata and goes down short of the first down and now a very late flag thrown by the referee and some pushing and shoving as they stop the play as well the referee from well behind the play threw a flag in at the end the result of play is a first down after the play dead ball personal foul number 67 offense 15-yard penalty Results first and ten, Boston College. I don't think the result of the play was a first down, was it? I, I thought it was. I actually did think it was a first down when he caught the football. Well, then our yellow line is way off. That's what I was. I'm going looking by. at the flag. I'm looking at the marker. And yeah. I thought he was past the marker. Well, it's not often that the yellow line is wrong, but uh, yeah. the wrong be really wrong. <laughs> And, and uh, that was way off. So. And I'm not so sure Steve Adazio doesn't hate that penalty. That's Aaron Montero, the left tackle, just trying to protect his teammate. One of his brothers out there getting popped around after the catch. Still a first down, but it backs him up a little bit. Dylan Spins around to the 31-yard line. Well, and you can already see the Dylan effect. When, when this guy plays and when he's healthy, He's the best player on BC's team, and they are automatically a better football team. His presence tonight having a huge impact. Missed the handoff that time. That, that wasn't supposed to be a quarterback run. You could see by A.J. Dillon's response, he looked around like, <laughs> I was supposed to get this football. What happened? Mm -hmm. Scott Patch and swung down. Anthony Brown, backup defensive end for Miami. There's third down and two. We see three out of four on third down against the number one third down defense in the country. Dylan, I'm a little gun shy now with the yellow line, Todd. <laughs> well, third and two, and for BC, that that's an easy call. Let's run the football with our horse. You know, he's 
He may not be 100%. You know, every time he gets tackled low, he's going to feel it. We'll just give him a blow, get him a rest, sub him out, and just hope we can ride him as, as far as we can. He has not been tackled for four weeks. He got hurt in the Temple game after he gained 160 yards, but those kind of hits add up. I mean, it's, and it's not a dirty hit, and it's the way you need to tackle a guy like that because he's so powerful in his upper body that you have to tackle him low. We'll almost certainly go for this. BC has attempted only three field goals all year in seven games. They made all three. But Steve Adazio's kicker, Colton Lichtenberg, has been bothered by a groin injury. That's why he doesn't kick off. Sixth year at Boston College for Adazio. Been to Bowles in four of the first five. First BC coach in history to do that. But the best year, seven and six. They've had three of those under his watch. They're hoping that tonight's game gets them to six and two for the first time under Coach Adazio and really sends this program off and running. He has said it's one of the biggest games of his tenure here. They're going for it on fourth down. Brown, the keeper, looks like he got it from here. Yeah, he didn't need much. He didn't get it initially, but I think that second push, that second surge is going to get him the first down. It's a very experienced veteran Boston College offensive line. In fact, the second most experienced coming into the season behind Wisconsin. Yeah, 154 combined career starts. Up front, Aaron Montero, Sam Schmall, John Baker, the center and team captain, Chris Lindstrom, the right guard, terrific, and Ben Petrulli. 154 combined starts. Dylan on first down slides inside the 25. That, that's the kind of run that Steve Adazio, when he was describing A.J. Dillon to us yesterday, he said he drags defenders like nobody I've ever seen. That, that was a perfect example. I mean, he drugged defenders for about two yards there to make it a three-yard game. Kobe White, the motion man. Back and forth he goes. Dillon in trouble. Out of trouble. Out of trouble and almost into the end zone. First and goal, Boston College. A magnificent run by the sophomore from New London, Connecticut. We talked about how he has quick feet in the hole. This takes quick feet to change directions the way he's doing it, 250 pounds. That is, that's a special talent that A.J. Dillon has, he turned a negative yardage play into a big time play inside the five. Three season player of the year in the ACC, just showed you why. David Bailey steps in for him. Dillon didn't become a starter until the middle of last season, mid-October. Since then, in games he started, he's averaged 159 yards per game. That is far and away the leading number in the country. When he plays, BC is automatically better. Their numbers all go up. And right here, even if you fake it to him, your quarterback might walk in for his second touchdown. And Dylan, I think he stumbled a bit taking the handoff, and he lost a couple. Good penetration up front by that Miami defensive line. Miami defense has their back against the wall right now. Michael Pinckney, one of those veteran leaders with the tackle there. Third down situation here. Miami's trying to force a field goal attempt. Miami had been giving up 237 yards per game for Manny Diaz, second best in the country, behind only Michigan. Boston College has 274 already. Two long touchdown drives and trying for another. Brown, plenty of time and incomplete. Tried to get it to Kobe White. Michael Jackson had the coverage. Now Michael Jackson's an outstanding cover guy. It was the same kind of thing. I think if Anthony Brown would have looked a little bit deeper, he had his tight end wide open, but he opted to go to White instead. Watch back here. Watch the tight end wide Ooh. open. Sweeney, if he would have just looked a little deeper, he'd have had another touchdown pass. Misread that one, and Miami gets the stop on third down. You mentioned they've only tried three field goals all year. Lichtenberg, two of them. He's made both of them. This is a little more than an extra point. And it's good. 
22 yards. There is a flag down. And Miami was offside. Offside, defense, number 56. Penalty is declined. Field goal is good. That was a 21 play drive for Steve Adazio's Boston College offense. A mysterious man wearing a red kerchief was calling out, basically setting up a triage. The minute I saw the reference to the red kerchief, I went, oh my God, Wells, I found you. Nearly eight months after 9-11 that Allison Crowther read that article and realized the heroic role her son played in rescuing so many in the South Tower of the World Trade Center on that horrible day. Jefferson and Allison Crowther saluted by the crowd on Red Band Dan and I during the commercial break. Danny Longman kicks off. DC leading by 10. DJ Dallas though has been a pain in the neck for the kickoff coverage unit of Boston College. Another good one up 30. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, I'm here with Wells Crowther's parents, Allison and Jefferson, and you know, you're out there and the crowd is on their feet cheering for you, and I saw you just with this tender hug to each other. What does this mean that they are keeping your son's spirit alive here? It's a, just a, such a beautiful thing for us, for our whole family. Wells loved being at Boston College every moment of it. Uh, he still has uh, dear friends that still surround us and support us, uh, remembering Wells. And, and the university has been just tremendous in, in carrying on Wells' story and legacy. I know people at home might be thinking, why the red bandana? And Dad, you have this story, don't you? You yeah. gave him that for a very special reason. Why? Well, he was a little guy, and we were getting dressed for church. And I had on my suit, and in my suit pocket, I had a nice, crisp, white bat, white handkerchief, you know, folded neatly and so forth. And Well said, Daddy, can I have one of those for my suit? And he had a, you know, little Eaton suit that Allison had gotten him. And I said, of course you may. I went into my bureau, and I got out a white handkerchief. And just on a whim, I picked up a red. I had bandanas, red and blue. I picked up a red bandana, and I brought it with me also. And I said... <coughs> Okay, Wells, <laughs> pardon me. I folded up the white one nice and neatly and I put it in his breast pocket. I said, that's for show. The red one, I said, you're gonna put in your back pocket and that's for blow when you have to blow your nose. You know, or wipe up the spill or, you know, somebody's un unhappy and crying and you wanna give them something to wipe their eyes with, that's what you do. And he said, okay, and that was it. But, it, you know, with him, he had it always with him, and he wore, when he played sports, he tied it around his forehead so that the perspiration wouldn't get in his eyes. He was a, in high school, he was a big ice hockey player and lacrosse player. And here at BC, he was four years as, as lacrosse, varsity lacrosse, but he always wore that red bandana. Well, it's beautiful to see that spirit kept alive. You did a quick message before the game to the team. What did you say in your video, Allison? Oh, gosh, I, I said, well, we're so proud of the, of the team and how they play. And uh, they, the athletics are very important, but to us, more important even is the good sportsmanship and how they, how they play uh, together as a team and always conduct themselves as gentlemen on and off the field. Well, thank you. They told us your son was the epitome of a BC man, and we appreciate you sharing his memory with it all of us. Thank you. Others. BC, BC grads, BC people are men and women for others, and Wells was a man for others. No question. Thank you so much. You're thank more than you. welcome. Thank you. Ultimately, so that is one of the mottos here: men and women for others. You couldn't do more for others than Wells Crowther did, and the players here very familiar. With it, Anthony Brown talked to us. I knew the story of Wells Crowder even before I ever came to Boston College. But uh, they are reminded of it frequently. Nifty drive here now for Miami with a nice mix of run and pass. Three runs by Travis Homer and a couple of big completions. Malik Rozier continues to stay hot. Nothing flashy, but seven of eight for 67 yards and the one touchdown. Very methodical on offense. They've had a nice mix of play calling. 
Mark Richt calls the plays himself, the head coach. Brevin Jordan, this reception, Ham Cheevers knocked him out of bounds, but it's a first down for the Canes on the move with six minutes to go in the half. The Miami offensive line, which is had some games where they've given up sacks and tackles for loss has been pretty solid tonight. Again, they're starting a true freshman, D.J. Scaife. This is his second start at right tackle, number 51. Well, they think the future is bright on the offensive line with guys like Scaife. They have other young players. Who Mark Rick told us before the season, when, you know, they get in, get experience. It'll be the kind of line that you really want to have if you're going to be a national championship contending team. Well, here they are at the part of the field now where those big receivers against the smaller cornerbacks comes into play again. Lawrence Cager, 18, Daryl Langham, 81. They're the two wideouts on both sides of the field right now for Miami. After the five-yard run by Rozier, second and five, Miami from the 11. D.J. Dallas got hit hard and taken down by Vinny De Palma, true freshman backup linebacker out of Wayne, New Jersey. Very aggressive run fill that time by De Palma. This this BC team has a lot of linebackers. They rotate a lot of guys in there in that front seven. Big time play that time by De Palma. Well coached by Bill Sheridan, longtime NFL linebacker coach. Wildcat with DJ Dallas now. He turns the corner and scores a Miami touchdown. Really nice job by Brevin Jordan right here and Travis Homer. Watch those two guys seal the edge and then the patience of DJ Dallas. He waits, he waits, and he allows those two blocks to get set and then turns the corner for the touchdown. Really well executed by the tight end and the running back leading the way. That was an impressive Miami drop. Mm -hmm. And they needed it because this vaunted defense hasn't stopped Boston College yet. Bubba Baxa just slides one inside the right upright with 434 to go in the half. Miami. September 11, 2003, memorial dedicated here on the Boston College campus to the 22 BC alums, including Wells Crowther, who lost their lives two years earlier. So many of these BC players know people who are impacted. They have yeah. 13 players from New Jersey, have 13 from New York, they have eight from Connecticut, 24 from Massachusetts, two of the planes left from Boston Logan Airport. Michael Walker. Michael Walker got to the 30 yard line, and Trajan Bandy said, That's enough. Four and a half to go, first half. BC up by three. Back in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, Anthony Brown, Boston College quarterback, has run for a touchdown, thrown for a touchdown. Is not the only talented member of his family. America, my home, sweet home. His mom, Carissa God Henderson, saying, God bless America. America between the third and fourth quarter of their home game here about a month ago against Temple. AJ Dillon, the ball carrier. And that was a surprise to Anthony when we visited with him yesterday <laughs> and asked him about it. He said, I didn't know what was happening. He said, I'm standing there, all of a sudden they make an announcement. Carissa Henderson yeah. will lead the crowd in God Bless America. I said, what? <laughs> she is a trained singer. You, you could tell she was trained the way she moved that microphone down when she was ready to, to get after him. She knew what she was doing. How about and this? He's an only child. A.J. Dillon, the ball carrier, about two yards short of a first down. 
Pretty interesting team. His mom's a singer. Wyatt Ray, the be one of their best defensive players. Grandfather's Nat King Cole. I mean, this uh, got some musical genes on this team. And they have a lot of sons of famous people on this BC team. A.J. Dillon gets just enough for the first down. In fact, he's the grandson of the great College Football Hall of Famer Tom Gatewood. First and 10 BC. Second pass reception for A.J. Dillon. Again, coming into the game, only four receptions. Look out. Brown in trouble after he faked the handoff. And he threw it to the defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz. Pressure from Michael Pinckney. Well, how about this collection of greatness? Ron Dane's son. Uh, Javian is a freshman running back here. We mentioned A.J. Dillon. Tate Haynes, the son of the Hall of Famer, the cornerback, Mike Haynes. Paul Pasqualoni. And Tyler Vrabel now coaches son. You mentioned Wyatt Ray and John Tessator. What a wonderful young man he is. We got to visit with John yesterday, freshman kicker, the son of our friend and colleague Joe Tessator. David Bailey. Actually stopped by Joe Tess's tailgate before the game. He was here and just loving experiencing this with his son. And Mike Vrabel came to the tailgate. It was kind of cool to see these guys get to uh, enjoy what their sons are doing now. Uh, in their careers third down and three three minutes to go on the half the toss to Bailey and he does well to get to the line of scrimmage flag down far sideline along the line of scrimmage Shaq Quarterman led the Miami defense on that play up to this point BC has really held their own on third down they were three for six before that play illegal formation offense five players in the backfield five yard penalty third down Surprised Miami didn't decline that to just go ahead and force the punt. I don't think Steve Adazio would be thinking go for it now. Now here's where I think at third and long, as good as BC has played on offense, almost 300 yards, I would not be surprised to see a run or a screen here <laughs> on third down. Scott Leffler does not want to take a chance to incite this Miami defense because a sack or a turnover turns these guys loose. And here's a blitz and Brown just did get it off it was Amari Carter the safety who sped up that play and forced the incompletion in the direction of Tommy Sweeney Miami's defense lives for this here's Carter right here coming off the edge he's going to be an unblocked safety Anthony Brown trying to throw a middle screen to the tight end so fortunately he was able to get rid of the football quickly but you just want to avoid those situations as much as possible against this hurricane defense Teams came in with 25 sacks each, tied for the ACC lead. Neither has yielded a sack tonight. Jeff Thomas in retreat. He's down near the five yard line, and there are flags down as well. A 48 yard punt, loss of five on the return, and good coverage by Max Richardson. Excellent coverage, and it's going to be an illegal block in the back against Miami, so it's going to back them up even further inside their own five yard line with just under two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Excellent kick, excellent coverage, and uh, exactly what BC wanted to do in terms of flipping the field there right before halftime. There are two fouls against the return team during the return. Illegal block in the back, number six declined. Illegal no block in the back, number eight is accepted. Half the distance to the goal penalty. First down Miami. Time out. I'm number eight. I'm upset. They have two number eights. <laughs> We're not sure which one it is. All right, Adnan, thank you. Entertaining first half here. College football prime time presented by Outback Steakhouse. From Chestnut Hill, Mass, Miami. Backed up near its own goal line. Two and a half to go in the half, and DJ Dallas stacked up at the line of scrimmage. You know, Sean, when I'm watching this game, it reminds me of what I saw two weeks ago in their film against Virginia. Their offense, they don't have any explosive timeout. plays. Boston College. Boston College calling a timeout here. Second but timeout. When you talk about runs of over 12 yards or passes over 20, BC has five in the game. Miami has zero. They're still in the game. 
but they haven't had any big plays. Please reset the game. On a 40 degree night here in the Athens of America, the hub of the universe, Boston, Massachusetts. Miami, second and 10 from its own three. Down by three, 221 to go in the half. I bet they throw here. Homer for two. Will Steve Adazio use his last time up? Yes, he will. He is. Timeout, Boston College, their third and final timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. And Todd, you were talking before we went to the last commercial break about the lack of explosive plays on offense for Miami. Mark Rick calling the plays. When we think of Miami over the years, you think of guys all over the offense who could make explosive right. plays. The loss of Amon Richards. You know, he missed five games last year. They were really excited to have right. him back two years ago, a freshman All-American, more than 70 receptions. He was a guy who yeah. could be counted on almost every game to give you an explosive play yeah, or two. He was that guy. He was a leader. He was a hard worker, and they really miss him. Now, Jeff Thomas has kind of been that guy, but he's been non-existent tonight. I mean, coming into the game, their leading receiver is a tight end, a freshman tight end. You just don't expect that when you know the caliber of athletes, skill athletes that the Miami Hurricanes traditionally have. So uh, a little surprising, but uh, they're right in this game. They're only down three. They're trying to be very smart with the football here, but in order to win it, they're going to have to create some big plays with their offense in the second half. A career ending neck injury for Amon Richards. A little sorry for him for this Miami team. High throw. Oh. And D. Wiggins couldn't snare, and that was dangerous as it went up in the air off his hands. This is the, probably the worst pass Malik Rozier's made today. I mean, he's got an open receiver. That ball just comes out funny. It didn't have a good spiral. It took off on him. It was high, and he was very fortunate that that tipped pass was not intercepted because he had what he wanted, and they would have uh, gotten the first down. So Zach Fiegels has had an up-and-down season. As a matter of fact, he lost the starting punting job for a while after some difficulties in the first couple of games. And now Mark Richt wants time a timeout. Out. Miami, 30-second timeout. BC's dangerous. They have blocked four kicks yeah. in their last two games, including two punts. You mentioned the two blocked punts. Travis Levy, the backup running back, has recovered blocked punts for touchdowns in each of their last two games. He's been in the right spot. They do not come after Eagles. It's a bad kick. Low and returnable for the dangerous Michael Walker. And he brings it all the way back to the 15-yard line. But there's a penalty flag back at the initial block. With these BC special teams, I don't know if I've ever seen a wider range. Yeah. You know, they do some great things. We mentioned the block kicks. Walker's been a terrific return man the last couple of years. They also During turn the return, it over. Holding number 24 return team. 10 yard penalty. First down, Boston College. Tajamir Torres, starting cornerback. They've given up some long returns, as we've seen tonight. It is uh, every kind of action you could have on special teams this well, it's year. Right, it's right there. It's the initial blocker. It was not a block in the back, but he just got his hands up around the shoulder pads. And drew the flag. That was a potential scoring threat right there on the return, and uh, Miami's defense caught a break there. Instead of having the ball inside the 20-yard line, BC at the 45. Bear in mind, Steve Adazio said unless they're inside the 20, he probably wouldn't try a field goal. And he used his timeouts to stop the clock on defense. Ooh. Deflected pass. It was intended for Travis Levy. And that one hung tenuously in the air. First release of the rankings. Top 25 Tuesday night on ESPN. Brought to you by Allstate. Todd's now an expert. After he attended the mock exercise in Dallas a couple of weeks ago. Kobe White. Out of bounds, 39 yard line. Zach McLeod, the tackle. Well, again, third down situation. 
where Miami plays their best in terms of being able to pressure the quarterback and their ability to cover downfield. Got to be smart with the football, Anthony Brown. And a relatively safe throw and an incomplete pass as Sheldrick Redwine just blasted Kobe White to knock the ball out. Let's see what Coach Adazio does here on fourth down and for the plus 39. It's a really nice throw. Kobe White let that ball get into his body, and Sheldrick Redwine did a nice job of busting up the catch. Everybody talked about Jaquan Johnson, but Sheldrick Redwine has played at a similar level at the other safety position this year. Yeah, Manny Diaz said he has become a big time player. Talking about the senior from Miami, Florida. So here's Grant Carlson with the BC punt. And a fair catch made by DJ Dallas. Twenty five yard punt. Well Anthony Brown has done a nice job. He's made good decisions. He's read when it was time to run. This time this was his touchdown run. Saw a nice opening to the left side. Walks it into to the end zone. Then a little play action. Again, with the running of A.J. Dillon, the threat of the run, it sets up their play action. They throw to their tight ends. And then they've had three gadget plays in the first half. They've all worked. This was the throw back to the quarterback, Anthony Brown, the throw by Jeff Smith. So a very solid first half for Anthony Brown, 11 to 21, 125 yards, and no turnovers. Malik Rose, your short throw, incomplete. Again, a little bit high, looking for D. Wiggins who, by the way, was not the number eight, called for the penalty that was accepted. Yeah. On the punt earlier, it was D.J. Ivey, just to get Wiggins off the hook. Second and ten. Two timeouts for Miami. At their own 15, they have just 140 yards of offense. Travis Homer. Again, it's against a good defense, it is very difficult without chunk plays. Yes. It, it's very difficult to sustain drives and to score points without chunk plays. And they have had zero in the first half, and that's something they'll have to address in the locker room. They're in the game, but they've got to find a way to create some chunk plays in the second half. Just trying to get the first down. This is close. Looks like from our vantage point, they gave him enough for the first down. Homer stopped by Zach Allen and Isaiah McDuffie. Allen came back for his senior year and likely to be a first round pick. And he's glad he did. He told us yesterday he thinks he got a lot better with a lot of terrific coaching over the summer from Jim Reed and this defensive staff. D. Wiggins couldn't catch it. I don't think D. Wiggins likes the cold weather. I, I really don't. I don't think he is concentrating on catching the football for whatever reason. He's a young guy who's been forced to play because of some injuries, but those are some easy catches that he's just not concentrating enough on catching the football. Well, more than two thirds of the players dressed for Miami tonight are from the state of Miami, the state of Florida, many of them from the Miami area. Malik Rozier, short pass, caught by Brevin Jordan. And Mark Richt, I wasn't sure if he'd use a timeout. They're still only inside their own 30 yard line timeout. here. Miami. 30 second timeout. This is the coldest kickoff of a Miami game Please in several years. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I couldn't help noticing before the game that on the Miami sideline, they have these big, huge heaters. You can see all the players gathered in front of the heaters on the sideline, but they brought in these big benches. They have heat lamps. They have helmet warmers. Then you look on the BC sideline. They have cold metal benches and I think four total little measly heaters. I think the BC kids love playing in the cold. Now Shaq Quarterman of Miami said before the game, you know, I love playing on the road. I love playing in the cold. I love a little chill, but they don't seem to be enjoying the chill quite as much right now. Well, I'll tell you what, if the BC stadium managers are on it, they should have that heat cranked up really high in the Miami locker room at halftime. So then when they come out in the second half, it'll feel even colder. <laughs> Guys don't want to come back out in the cold when they get warmed up at halftime sometimes. But so far, again, Miami is doing what they need to do to stay in the football game. 
They just got to find a way to make some big plays offensively. Oldest game for them in five years. Malik Rozier running room. Making that timeout look smart by Coach Rick to the 44. And now they're in business. I think they need to throw the ball down the field vertically. They're probably going to kill the clock here. They got to throw the ball down the field vertically. I think the guys to look for, number four, Jeff Thomas is, is kind of their guy. He coming into the game averaging almost 24 yards per catch. He's the guy who can stretch this field and stretch the defense. He does not have a catch of more than 12 yards. His only catch, in fact, went for 12 yards. He came in averaging more than 23 per reception this year. Third in the country. 35 seconds to go in the half. Bubba backs his long field goal is 47. Win really not much of a factor. Half Cheevers had coverage on Daryl Langham. There's Baxa. True freshman out of Pasadena, Texas, so he likely hasn't kicked on many nights as cold as this one. Breeze right now is five miles per hour and more across the field than anything else. 30 seconds to go. Rozier finds running room again. First down, 41-yard line of Boston College. Mike Palmer, a backup safety with the tackle. Another good decision by Malik Rozier. He's really been a heady guy here in this first half. He's now their leading rusher. 48 yards on five carries, the last one for 15 yards. And that's the first big play of the first half. And it came from a quarterback scrambling, making a good decision, a run of 15 yards. The other guy that can stretch the field on this defense is that tight end, Brevin please Jordan, number please nine. Please reset the game clock to 22 seconds. 22. So you're going to have Jordan and Thomas both on the same side of the formation here, a three-by-one set. Jordan is on the inside on the slot right here, and Thomas is outside. Nine and four, the two guys that can really stretch the field. Second and 10, 20 seconds in the half. They finally fire one deep. The receiver fell down. Two BC Eagles there, and it falls incomplete. Brandon Sebastian had the best shot at it. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and that's why Sebastian had a chance. So did Torres. Jeff Thomas fell down, and both Eagles had a chance for an interception, and neither one of them could come down with the football. From the progressive pylon cam. Very nearly the first turnover of the night. 16 seconds to go. Likely not in field goal range here. They bring a blitz, and Rozier goes down back in his own territory. Max Richardson led the way for Boston College. The first sack of the night for either team. And it'll end the half. Max Richardson beats that freshman tackle, Scaife. Gets to the quarterback, Max Richardson. His dad played football at Michigan. His sisters, one of them played basketball or lacrosse at Michigan. The other one played softball at the University of Kentucky. Nice play by Richardson then to have. The big surprise, 299 yards of offense for Boston College in the first half against the defense that gives up 60 yards fewer than that per game. Here's Holly. Well, Coach, the very first play of the game, you handed it off to A.J. Dillon. What has his return done to impact your team in this first half? Well, obviously, you know, he energizes you and you have one of your great players come back in and, and, and make a presence back on the field. And he's playing fantastic tonight, really playing with great determination and courage. You told us you wanted to play wide out, yep. wide open. Right. What gave you the courage to go for all the trick plays early in this game? I told you we were going to do that. You know, we, we prepared for those, and we're going to we got, we got more to go. So we're going to keep playing the way we're playing right now, and uh, just keep hammering away at this thing. Thank you, Coach. All righty, take care. Yeah, we thank Steve for the tease to stay tuned for more fun to come in the second half. Always fun back in the studio with Joey and Jesse. Here's Adney. 
first meeting between these two ACC rivals since 2012, and a good one brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. It's ESPN's college football primetime from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Bubba Baxa kicks off, and it's a touchback as Michael Walker took a knee. And we welcome you back, Sean McDonough, along with Todd Blackledge, rejoined by Holly Rose Shirley. And what are your thoughts as we head toward the second half? I was just really impressed with what BC was able to do offensively. I mean, they did things that nobody's done to Miami. They almost have 300 yards already after one half of football. They averaged 6.1 yards per play. Coming in, Miami only giving up 3.8 yards per play, one of the best in the country. So uh, I was very impressed with their mix of run and pass, their early down success. I would expect Miami defensively here in the second half to become a little bit more aggressive. I think they'll crowd the line of scrimmage more. I think we'll see Redwine and Johnson, the two safeties, in blitz situations a lot more here on early downs. BC, as you saw, 294 in offense in the first half. The season high given up by Miami in any game for a game is 334 in their win at Toledo. Only two teams have had more than 300 yards of offense. BC coming up on that. Ray Martin, the catch. A moment ago, Holly with Mark Richt. Well, Coach Malik Rozier has been really good in the first half, but he just came out of locker room limping a little bit. What's your expectation for him in the second half? Uh, he'll, he'll play good. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. Okay, what do you want to do to get a few more explosive plays going? Well, I don't know if that's what, what the game's going to turn out to be. I think we just got to move the ball. I mean, we're down by three. We don't know if we need explosive plays right now. We need to execute. Thank you, Coach. Yep. A.J. Dillon off and running out to the 46, an explosive play of 20. So he says they can win, I guess, yeah. doing it a little bit at a time. If they completely shut down B.C.'s offense in the second half, which they did not do in the first half. Jeff Smith gets the Eagles to midfield to the 49-yard line of Miami, bumped out by Zach McLeod. I remain very impressed by the play calling of Scott Leffler yeah. in this Offensive staff, Boston College, very creative. Yep. 28 runs, 24 passes, about four or five gadget plays already. Anthony Brown, blitz coming, and he saw it coming. It was right up the middle, but he had nowhere to throw it. Coach Leffler doesn't like that play. Jonathan Garvin and Pat Bethel had a meeting at the quarterback. Now this is one Anthony Brown needs to get rid of. He's made really good decisions. He doesn't want to force a mistake, but sometimes the defense wins. If you can't get rid of it, just eat it like he did and live to play another down. Third and long, a good situation for Miami's defense. Scott Lovers, I don't care if the fans boo. We're going to be conservative on third down, not ignite the turnover chain. Kobe White spins down shy of midfield. Sheldrick Redwine, another tackle. And Boston College will punt. The negative yardage plays, sacks, tackles for loss, that is, along with turnovers, is what the Miami defense has, that, that just fuels them. They got it on second down, they forced the punt now on fourth, and they get the chance to give the ball back to their offense. Grant Carlson to punt. Low snap, but he got it off. And a fair catch made by Jeff Thomas. At the 12-yard line, back to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts after this. Miami coach Mark Rick handed the keys to his offense to Malik Rozier for the second time this year in the first half. Very heady play by Malik Rozier. He scrambled when it wasn't there downfield, made very good decisions with the ball. When they got into the red zone, he capitalized on the mismatch of his big receiver against the smaller corner of BC. And then for the most part in the first half, a lot of this quick throws out of his hand to beat that very good BC rush. Good, accurate, methodical passing. And that's why they're right in this football game. He took care of the ball and he made really good decisions. 79 yards passing. Couple of double digit yardage runs on that last drive of the half. And before they can snap it from the six, there's some movement. The Eagles are playing at Tyree St. Louis. Offense. Number 78. Yes. At the distance to the goal penalty. First down. Zach Allen, I think, drew that penalty. He was shifting down inside, and it caused uh, Tyree St. Louis to just kind of flinch. And that's what drew the penalty. 
Zach Allen affects a lot of things. He was on the right side that last play. Now he's over here on this side of the defense. They look for the right matchups for number two. There's a holding call on the punt against Miami, so the ball was moved to the six from the 12, half the distance while we were away. Travis Homer gets them back across the five, and that's it. He ran into Wyatt Ray. Both of these defensive ends spent a lot of time in the summer with Jim Reed breaking down film watching cut ups. They both have elevated their game and they're both guys that are going to have futures playing on Sundays after they leave here. Ray and Allen told Jim Reed they'd like to study the techniques of various outstanding NFL defensive linemen. Zach Allen said he particularly appreciates J.J. Watt. He said, I know I have a long way to go to get there, but you'd like to play like he does. Second and 11. Rozier's pass batted down by Ray Smith, who doesn't get a lot of attention in the middle of that defensive line. Number 96, surrounded by greatness on the end. Well, they take him out on third downs most of the time, but he's in on second down. He runs a little twist. He's got his eyes right on Malik Rozier and gets that right arm up and knocks the football down. He gets to take a break now on third down, but he made a nice play on second. Well, what Zach Gallen told us about those cutups is that I didn't realize Coach Reed lived on Cape Cod. He was driving an hour and 40 minutes every day to work with Wyatt Ray and me. So it was only after about a month of that that he realized what Coach Reed was doing. And on third and 11, Miami, a big conversion on the slant to Daryl Langham for 17 yards. Really nice hesitation move by Langham, allowed the inside receiver to clear, and another quick ball out of the hands of Malik Rozier for the first down. And another quick throw to Jeff Thomas. Could not take ability, advantage of his ability there to run after the catch. Short gain to the 26. This is the best I've seen Malik Rozier play. I mean, it, much better than what we saw in that opening game against LSU, better than what I saw on film, even coming in off the bench last game against Virginia. A very focused guy and very confident right now. And they're falling in love with the slants and with good reason. They're hitting them. That's Jeff Thomas for another Miami first down from their six-yard line out to the 34. The thing about those slants, Sean, is it, it gets out of Malik Rozier's hands before Wyatt Ray and Zach Allen and these outstanding pass rushers can get to him. He's not holding on to the football very long. Like Anthony Brown, Rozier also a very good student in Miami. Takes the academics seriously. Homer dumped for loss by Ray Smith. He has a degree already in sociology, working toward a second one in sports administration. Malik Rozier. Just five, they get to Rozier. Ball up in the air, and still in the air. Oh and goodness. snatched out of midair by Hamp Cheevers. And now he's inside the 25, and tackled from behind at the 14-yard line by Brevin Jordan. That ball was in the air forever. It looked like Max Richardson did the most for the Eagles to send it skyward as he hit Rozier. Richardson and Ray were there. The ball was up in the air. Cheevers comes down with it. The first turnover of the game and comes at a very costly time for Malik Rozier. It's five interceptions already this season for Hamp Cheevers, Jr. from Trenton, Florida, near Gainesville. Coach has said he weighed about 135 pounds when they started recruiting him in high school. And he's a solid 180 now and tied for the national lead in interceptions with Grant Delpit of LSU. 
It was one of the 14 the semifinals for the Jim review. Thorpe Award as the best defensive back in the country. And they're reviewing the previous play. Do you know why? I don't. Malik Rozier has been able to get rid of the ball quickly all night. And that last play, he had to hold it a little bit longer, and he got sandwiched, and the ball just got away from him. I don't know what they're looking at. Never hit the ground. Little guy out there going high to get the football. But it was Zach Allen and Max Richardson who met at the quarterback and forced that ball to go straight up in the air. Well, the ball went up in the air. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a forward pass or a fumble. I mean, the ball's right. went in the air. It was caught out of the air. Right. So. It's BC's ball. Hamp Cheevers. Jim Reed described him as dynamic and daring. Yeah. He said when he came on his recruiting trip, his mother came with him. They had never seen snow. Jim Reed said <laughs> it's sand. Think of Florida. Don't worry it's just about white it. sand. <laughs> Jim Reed is one of the characters that we have met doing After this review, job. After review, the ruling on the field of an interception is confirmed. First down, Boston College. There's Jim Reed just to the left of the pole. Baseball cap clapping. 67 years young, still as energetic as anybody we've met with this season. Yeah. Head coach at UMass, spent 20 years up at UMass as an assistant and a head coach out in the western part of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Richmond, VMI. Spent a couple years with the Miami Dolphins as well, coaching outside linebackers. 35 years of coaching. And very proud of his defense. A.J. Dillon, the ball carrier, to the 10 yard line. Well, we talked about the Miami defense thriving on turnovers. That was a huge get by the Boston College defense. Dillon quickly talked to the top of the telecast about his quickness. Yeah. His fast feet at 250 pounds. He exploded through that hole. Third down, less than a yard. BC trying to add to a three point lead. Anthony Brown. It's always on that second surge. Initially, there's good push up front by the Miami front. But Anthony Brown does a good job keeping those legs moving. I think he's going to get the first down. I'm, I'm back in full confidence with our yellow line. <laughs> Momentary hiccup. It happened to all of us. Frequently does up here in the booth. First and goal, BC. Scott Leffler has done a beautiful job calling plays. I think play action here on first down. Miami's going to be thinking run. It might get a tight end in the end zone open. Zion roll, Brown in trouble. Open receiver. Don't know if his arm was hit, but it certainly was impeded with the defender, Mike Smith, fifth year senior, backup linebacker coming at him quickly. Well, Sweeney's right here. Now, he's going to purposely take his time. Hold, 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 then try to slip out to the backside. And Anthony Brown just couldn't hold the ball long enough to wait for him to clear. Good idea, just not enough time to execute the play. The toss to Dillon. And he is met behind the line of scrimmage. Sheldrick Redwine up from the secondary and with plenty of help including Shaq Quarterman. Yeah, Redwine did a perfect job. Watch Redwine set the edge. He's not going to let Dylan get outside. He's going to force him back inside, and that's where Quarterman was, and then other white shirts. But Sheldrick Redwine did the job of keeping him to the outside and forcing that ball back in. Big play here, third and goal from the five. With eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Anthony Brown looking like he might get pressure from both sides. He does, and from the middle, quick slant. And it is broken up, intended for Kobe White and defended by Trajan Bandy. Trajan Bandy is one of the leaders of this secondary. First year as a starter, 
plays this slant perfectly. Gets his hand on the football, and again, the matchup of corners against wide receivers in this game favors Miami. They get in that definite passing situation on third down, and Miami has the edge. Nice play by Bandy. Great job by Redwine on second down, and then Bandy with a nice play on third. There's Colton Lichtenberg, tough angle, 22 yards, no problem. BC with Lichtenberg, two for two in field goals tonight. And leading by six midway through the third. On Red Bandana night, here on the campus of Boston College, fifth annual Red Bandana game in honor and memory of Wells Crowther. A hero of 9-11, lost his life while saving at least a dozen others, former BC lacrosse player, class of 1999. BC's won two of these red bandana games. They've lost two. Had a tough time against Miami over the years. The Canes are 24 and five. All time against BC. Their rivalry goes back to the days of the old Big East and now together in the ACC as well. Oh, tough kickoff. It almost hit the bounds off the did. foot of Longman. And I guess they're going to say it hit D.J. Dallas and then went out of bounds. And look at this field position for Miami, their own three. Well, they started in horrible field position their last possession before the interception. I think he might have caught this ball and then stepped out of bounds. I think he picked it up. No, it, he touched it as it was out of bounds. He did never stepped out of bounds. They're saying he touched the football when it was out of bounds. Yeah, and he right touched there. it before that as well. So I don't think they're going to look at it to see if it was already out of bounds when he touched it because it hit him yep, several right times. Yeah. And a good call. Yeah. And a great look at it from our progressive pylon camera. Give progressive a little extra bang for their buck tonight. Well, Miami's offense needs to take care of the football right here. Their defense really bailed them out on that last play. That last possession. Play game offense. Wow. At the distance to the goal penalty. First down. That, that defensive stop by Miami forcing the field goal after the interception might have been their best defensive possession of the game. Keeps it as a one score game. And right now, Malik Rozier in this offense, they have to be very smart and very careful with the football. Well, BC scored in its first three possessions. And that field goal a moment ago was their first score since. You know, it's been a stud tonight for that Miami defense is Sheldrick Redwine. 11 yeah. tackles already midway through the third quarter and a pass breakup. Rozier to DJ Dallas, who found a hole off the right side, got wrestled down by Max Richardson at the 10. DJ Dallas is a little bit bigger than Travis Homer. Homer's a 205 pound back, Dallas is a 220 pound back. That's why he's in there at this part of the field. Jay, a sophomore from Dallas, both he and Homer moved up the depth chart last year. Rozier swung down for a loss. Behind the line of scrimmage by Isaiah McDuffie. Mark Walton, fine running back, injured middle of last year, so Homer moved up to number one. Dallas really played very little prior to that happening, and then he was an excellent compliment to Homer on their way to a 10-win season. Again, smart with the football right here by Malik Rozier. He's been very good throwing the slants in these kind of situations. Something that the ball can come out quickly. He's 12 for 20, but as Todd said, lack of the big plays in the passing game. Just 107 yards passing. Very few attempts even down the field. Trying that slant again, and it was one time too many. Taj Amir Torres. With another Boston College interception, their second in this quarter. There was two things that happened here. There was pressure inside. Watch the pressure get right up into the face of Malik Rozier, so he's not able to see clearly. And then as he throws it, Torres jumped the route of Jeff Thomas. He guessed right on the slant because they've thrown a lot of them, but the inside pressure forced a weak throw, and Torres was there for the interception. Two possessions in a row in their own territory deep. The Boston College defense takes the ball away. Second interception of the season for Torres, senior from Amherst, Massachusetts, about two hours west of here. And great field position again set up by the defense. A.J. Dillon, touchdown, Boston College. 
Well, here's the two things that we talked about. Quickness to bounce it outside and speed to outrun McLeod. Watch him just bounce from here outside. McLeod is a three-year starting linebacker. He bounces out and then he outruns him. Quickness to get to the bounce and speed to outrun him to the end zone. A.J. Dillon now with 127 yards on 20 carries. Welcome back, says Steve Adazio and Scott Leffler. Colton Lichtenberg. The extra point. Two interceptions by the BC defense leading to points here in the third quarter. Tajamir Torres sets up the touchdown run. 14 yards for A.J. Dillon. It's a 13-point BC lead. <laughs> third down one for Miami. Rozier the keeper. And a first down to the 47 with five minutes to go in the third quarter in Miami trailing 27 to 14. Yeah, run right behind your center, Tyler Gauthier. They're real leaders up there, and why not be your leading rusher? Get that first down. Malik Rozier now 45 yards on nine carries to lead the way for the Hurricanes. They still have just 221 yards of offense. Doing it bit by bit. No plays down the field. A rare throw down the field. Hey! Incomplete. Almost a great catch by Mike Harley. But close enough that you would think it might warrant a few more tries down the field. Hamp Cheevers had the coverage. Well, I think obviously Mark Richt has great respect for the pass rush ability of this BC defense, but you do have to keep them on us. You've got to take some shots down the field to keep them on us. Harley almost comes up with an unbelievable catch. He should be concerned, Coach Rick, because his offensive line is clearly not as good as this defensive front of Boston College, which is demonstrated again tonight. It's one of the best in the country. And right on cue, there's Zach Allen to drop him back at the 41-yard line. Zach Allen moves around. He goes left, right, inside, outside. Here he is working on the true freshman skate. He beats him with a speed rush. That's a 285-pounder beating a guy with a speed rush and getting to the quarterback. He normally likes to start the game out using a power rush and making that offensive tackle feel him physically. That time, he set him up with the speed rush. Third down and 16. Looked like they were holding Allen there. They dumped it off to Homer, and he's dumped out in the flat. Brandon Sebastian played it well. Redshirt freshman out of West Haven, Connecticut. I'll tell you, these two ends are a handful now. I mean, Zach Allen and Wyatt Ray, you're just not going to single block them without tight end help or chips or whatever very often. They're going to find their way to your quarterback. Zach Fiegels to punt. We'll talk about Zach Allen, what Steve Adazio hopes for from his BC football players. Tremendous citizen, 3.7 GPA in finance will graduate in December. Michael Walker, the fair catch. Holly? Well, when we talked to Zach Allen yesterday, it was so funny because he was maybe the most mild-mannered football player we've ever spoken to. Just very polite, very appropriate, very proper. And then he, you know, casually said, you know, one time I'd like to just run right through his face. Like, he said it that <laughs> gently. But well, I finally saw some fire after that sack just now. He had a great little showboating celebration. So I'm like, all right, it's in there. I know it's in there, Zach Allen. But talking to him, he was just very gentle. Very impressive. He's one of those guys that uh, when the game starts, Todd, he's yeah. a lot different. You played yeah. with and against a lot of those guys. Yep. Yeah, he is uh, won two state titles in high school, played for Lou Marinelli at New Canaan High School in Connecticut. And if it wasn't for Lou Marinelli, he wouldn't be here. Zach yeah. told us as a freshman in high school, he wanted to quit football. He was a baseball player, wanted to be the next Derek Jeter. He's a huge Yankee fan. And he said, Lou Marinelli called my dad. My dad had already told me, I'm all right if you quit football. I don't care. Do what you want to do. And a couple minutes after the conversation ended, his dad said, you got to go back and play a little more football. Let's give it a little more of a try. 
And by the end of his sophomore year, he had given up baseball. And Brown throws it up for grabs. And there's Romeo Finley with the interception, which will trigger the first appearance of the night of the turnover chain. A dangerous pass by Anthony Brown. First bad decision he's really made. He's normally very accurate when he rolls to his right, but this time he just makes a poor decision against really good coverage. Finley was in perfect coverage, and Anthony Brown should have never thrown this football where he did. And again, this Miami football team, not just their defense, their whole team is fueled by the turnover. Let's see if Malik Rozier and the, the Hurricane offense can take advantage of it now. Turnover chain around the neck of Romeo Finley, a second interception of the year, the 18th takeaway in this, their eighth game of the year for the Miami defense. Since that turnover chain made its debut the start of last year, only UCF has had more takeaways on defense the last season plus than these Miami Hurricanes. Brevin Jordan got them six. That was a big play for Miami. Down by 13, DJ Dallas, a gain of two. I think if Miami converts this third down, I think what they need to try to do is maybe go a play action pass with maximum protection and try to throw the ball deep down the field with great protection. They're not gonna be able to block Allen and Ray with normal five-man protections, but if they go six or seven-man protection, I think they'll have a chance but they've got to convert this third down first. Seven out of 13 on third down. Rozier, good fake to DJ Dallas. Lots of running room for Malik Rozier, and a first down out of bounds at the 22. Really nice job by Rozier. He read Wyatt Ray right there, number 11. That's who he's reading. He sees Ray kind of go down the line of scrimmage, get out of position, and makes a good decision to pull that football and run for the first down. 60 yards rushing now for Rozier. After a 21-yard gain on that play, he's averaging five and a half per carry. Jeff Thomas, he caught it. It looked like he expected to find a defender there immediately. Did turn it upfield and was tackled by Will Harris after a pickup of eight. Very, very important for Miami to capitalize on the turnover again. That, that Their defense sets the table with the turnover. Their offense on the move now. Got to capitalize with a touchdown. Down 13. Final seconds of the third quarter. Flag down, Rozier down, very close to the first down. Tanner Carafa, defensive tackle and a starter, made the tackle. Offside defense, number 24. Five-yard penalty results first down. It's a defensive back, cornerback, Tajamir Torres. Offside, that'll give Miami a first down inside the 10. Well, we've already seen Malik Rozier early in the ball game in this part of the field throw one up to the corner of the end zone for his big receiver. He's got Cager, he's got Langham. Mismatch on the smaller corners. Might see that coming out to start the fourth quarter. End of the third quarter here at Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. The red bandana game and the Eagles leading 27-14. An important ACC game for these two teams trying to keep their conference title hopes alive. Loss wouldn't be fatal, but it would make it really tough. Malik Rozier doing his part tonight with his feet finally down in the arms of Connor Strahan at the three-yard line. Toughest part of the field to, to execute and, and come through here. There's no first down. You're inside the 10-yard line. You got a score. Nice job by Rozier. He's made good decisions running the football tonight. A couple bad decisions throwing it, but running it, he's been on his game. Rushed for 66. His career high on the ground is 84 last season against Virginia Tech. DJ Dallas, the tailback. DJ Dallas to the line. And driven back by Zach Allen. 
Zach Allen again. He plays a little bit of everywhere. He's inside. He's outside. This time he lines up inside. He's right in here, and he's just going to slant to the inside, get rid of the block, and once he gets you wrapped up at 285 pounds, you're not going to move him forward. Again, big receivers on the outside. Cager to the top, Langham to the bottom of the screen. Two receivers to each side. Sometimes if you spread them out, it's a design quarterback run or draw, but BC crowding the middle. Dazio got a timeout right before the snap. Ran out onto the field to get before it called. Snap, timeout. He moves oh, pretty well. Has had both knees replaced, and the coach can still get around. Reason Steve Adazio had to call timeout. This veteran BC defense, when they saw this formation, was obviously confused. You see players looking at each other, questioning, trying to call timeout. So a very heady, smart move by Steve Adazio getting the timeout. DJ Dallas now in the Wildcat. Scored a touchdown earlier out of this look. And it might be the same play. They had him by the shirt and couldn't get him behind the line. But they stop him at the two. And this might well be four down territory. Field goal, you're still down by two scores. That was a beautiful play by Connor Strahan. He didn't get the tackle, but the run through linebacker at least slowed him down. Watch number 13 run through, and he doesn't get the tackle, but he slows him down just enough to allow Zach Allen to wrap him up and get the tackle. Now Malik Rozier back at quarterback. Still fourth down and goal. Key play in this game, perhaps in the season for Miami, hoping to defend its Coastal Division title. To the end zone, up for grabs, and Langham could not hang on. He got walloped at the end of it by Will Harris, and Langham is still down. Well, first of all, it was a beautiful play by Torres. He got the ball out, and then Harris just came to clean up and make sure. Torres, number 24, really fought and did a beautiful job getting the ball out. And then Will Harris came in and hit him with his chest, but Torres with an outstanding play. Well, I don't know about that hit. Let's bring in Bill Lamagne. What do you think of the end of this play? This gentleman right here, Harris, coming in on the high hit on Langham. He's a defenseless player. So whether you get him, and he didn't get him with the crown of the helmet, right. but he did get him to the head neck area. Right. Now the key thing is, do we have an indicator of targeting if you're going to go defenseless player? I don't see a launch. I don't see a thrust. So this, is, to me, is just incidental contact that happens sometimes in a football game. I don't have targeting. Harris makes the hit, but Torres made the play. But well, what Jim Reed told us about Torres, you know, Torres, we mentioned earlier from Amherst, Mass. Jim Reed coached at UMass in Amherst for 20 years. He said, you know, when I was uh, living out in Amherst for about 20 years, I coached youth sports, coached a kid named Torres. He said, yeah, that was my dad. <laughs> he also said, what do you have him listed as? Says, we have him five nine. He says, they lied. He's, he's about 5'7", yes, but he's got the heart, of a, but the heart of a lion, and he showed it on that play. I think they're going to take a look at this. Mm -hmm. You would think they would have been already since the play's been over for quite a while now. The previous play is under review for targeting. Reason for concern on the sideline for Will Harris and the B.C. Eagles. And now Boston College with a win tonight to get to bowl eligibility for the fifth time in the last six years. The defense held on fourth and goal, and now A.J. Dillon gets B.C. A little breathing room to the six. 23rd carry on the night. Again, his first game back after a four-week absence. Missed two games in a bye week. Important to mention as well that during the commercials you were watching, there was the ruling of no targeting on Will Harris. So no targeting. He'll remain in the game. And that's big two of the night yeah. next week because they have a big game at Virginia Tech next on the schedule. He would have been out for the first half of that game had they uh, there been a targeting foul. So much relief on the Boston College sideline. 
And they're not used to playing without him. This is his 37th career start, 46th career game. The senior from Swanee, Georgia. A.J. Dillon. Ooh, that's is that right the kind line? of hit you yep. worry about. Around the ankles, and he bounces back up after getting chopped down by Trajan Bandy. Boy, really nice block by the, the tight end on the edge there. 86, 84, both guys getting out of that is a that's a tough tackle. And again, it's not a dirty tackle by Bandy. You gotta go low against a big powerful back like that. Dylan again. Well, and now BC, even though they are a tempo team, they're not gonna play with tempo right now. The clock is on their side with a 13-point lead. Now they're gonna milk the clock the best that they can and yet keep their aggressiveness once they do snap the ball and call the play. Haven't done much on offense in the second half. Here's Brown. Nice call, beautifully executed. He's across midfield. And wasn't content to go out of bounds. He got about five or six more by staying in. Well, this is the Dillon effect. Nobody expected Anthony Brown to run the football. Watch the whole defense go with A.J. Dillon. Everybody's going that way. They're playing man-to-man -man on the tight end on that side, and nobody at home for Anthony Brown when he keeps the football. 43-yard run. David Bailey, true freshman thumpers. Steve Adazio calls him out of Ridley, Maryland. And Steve said he's special. Yeah. Just the, the only difference or the biggest difference, he doesn't have the same top end speed that A.J. Dillon has, but same kind of physical build and power. B.C. now over 400 yards, 413 yards of total offense against this Miami defense. First team to have more than 400 this year against Miami. A.J. Dillon. Dropped by Quarterman. I think back to our first game of the year, which was Miami and LSU in a neutral site in Arlington, Texas. A lot of excitement for Miami, bringing most of the talent back from the team that won 10 a year ago, went to the Orange Bowl for the first time since 2003. We weren't that impressed that night, yeah. and it was on the heels of uh, losing three in a row at the end of last season. And a loss tonight here, and they'll be five and three yeah. against a schedule that Really, other than LSU, and this is a very good BC team, obviously, isn't really that intimidating. BC lucky to get it back with Travis leaving. Yeah, I think the biggest problem for Miami is they just don't have enough on offense. They don't have enough ability to make big plays and threaten the defense. And and even though they stayed close for a good amount of the time of the game, but the Boston College never felt like they were out of control of the football game because of that. It was the 10 and 0 then a little bit of a mirage last year? They were number two in the country when the college football playoff rankings came out. I think it was a little bit, but I think again, when we talked about this in that opening game, they did some things that year that were unusual. All the turnovers that they had. More than seven, they go for it, and a diving catch made by Kobe White. That is huge. Keeps the chains moving and the clock running for Boston College. Really nice low throw. And nothing can hurt you on that throw. If it's incomplete, it's incomplete, but you throw it down there where your guy can go get it and you get a new set of downs and you continue to work the clock now. That was enormous. Miami would have taken over the 35. Here's A.J. Dillon. Flag down. Probably going to back him up. Dylan being very conscious of staying in bounds and going down. And then Lawrence Cager, big receiver, heading toward the locker room to holding call against BC. They're checking with Mark Rick to see if he wants to accept it. Holding. Offense number 77 10 yard penalty remains first down the center John Baker one of two team captains along with the safety will Harris four year starter already has a degree in marketing 
Yeah, Baker was actually voted captain last year also and got hurt in the very first game season ending knee injury but uh, a real leader of this team. Big numbers put up against the defense that have been one of the best in the country coming in. Well I think the balance of Boston College the decision making of Anthony Brown in the passing game the play calling of Scott Leffler was outstanding the gadget plays in the first half really kind of stunned this Miami defense a little bit and they have not been able to generate sacks I think they have one they had the one turnover but for the most part uh, BC did what they had to do offensively to kind of keep this talented defense at bay. Second and 21, Travis Levy, the running back, versatile player. Quick hitter to Jeff Smith to the 26-yard line. Another tackle for Sheldrick Redwine. They got a lot of it back. They'll need about 10 more. I think that might be Redwine down at the end of that play. When you watch this game tonight, you think they have two players in the secondary who are among the 14 semifinalists for the Jim Thorpe Award as the best right. defensive back. Henry. And this guy's not He's one of them. He's not one of them. <laughs> Jaquan Johnson and Michael Jackson are. Timeout on the field. Back at Boston College on Red Bandana Night, in honor and memory of Wells Crowther, Scott Johnson, our director. And so many members of our technical production crews in the spirit, including Stevie K in audio. Impossible task of making us sound good. <laughs> to have. We have quite a crew. Anthony Brown on third down and 11. Bear in mind, Steve Adazio said he doesn't like to kick a field goal beyond the 20 yard line, so unless they get inside the 20 here, likely to be four down territory. And he's letting that play clock and the game clock go down as far as it can. Again, Kind of different when they normally play. They were ready for A.J. Dillon. Nothing there for B.C., but by the time they snap it next, the game clock will be under six minutes to go. One hundred and forty nine yards rushing. There's Redwine back in the game. 149 for Dylan, which is actually 10 under what he's averaged since he became the starting running back a year ago, mid-season. Well, Steve Adazio likes what he's seen from Lichtenberg tonight, two for two, so he's going to apparently try a 44-yarder. Low snap, and that's why they haven't tried one when they're not inside the 20. Low hook to the left. Little low snap. Smith got it down with the kick well wide to the left. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Prime Time presented by Outback Steakhouse. Time for today's catch brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. And Twan, sometimes when you go fishing in the harbor, the stripers, it can take a long time to reel one in, dude. <laughs> this one did take a while for Ham Cheevers, but uh, he never lost sight of the football, and quite a play. Malik Rozier in trouble, the ball's out, and picked up by his offensive lineman, Jair Jones. There's a flag down as well. Jones at 316, rumbled out to the 40. Isaiah McDuffie was the guy who put the heat on Rozier. And the flag down at the 36. It kind of looked like the BC defense kind of stopped playing once that big fellow started rumbling with the football. Thought the play might have been over. 
Yeah, they, were, they reeled in a big one there for sure. <laughs> Courtesy of Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops. That might have been a little bit more like Vineyard Vines. Before though. the fumble holding defense number 24. The penalties declined. The result of the play is accepted. First down, Miami. Put that one in the playbook. A few more carries for Jair Jones, backup offensive lineman. There's the penalty right there on Torres. Took down Jeff Thomas. So time for Miami, more than five minutes. And two timeouts. But been a very methodical approach tonight. No explosiveness in the offense, minus a couple of runs by yeah. the quarterback, Rozier. And Jeff Thomas couldn't make that catch. Well, and if you're BC and if you're Jim Reed, you're saying, look, we just can't give him something easy now over our heads. We don't need to blitz. Let's rush with our front four. And let's make sure we, we cover everything deep. Make him throw the football underneath and then tackle. Four-man rush. And the throw well behind Brevin Jordan. Be a third down and 10 now for Miami. Miami eight for 15 on third down in the ball game. Really a good night for them. One of the best things they've done, 53% conversion. And they were 125th in the country last year on third downs. I would try to help out as much as I could with a bat on these two ends. Particularly Zach Allen, number two, who's been a big concern all night long, trying to bowl to the quarterback. Well blocked, and the pass is broken up. Mike Palmer, redshirt sophomore from Enwell, New York. Well, they did get a chip on Zach Allen. That got Rozier time to make the throw. The ball was a little bit high. And that enabled Palmer to come in and make the play. D. Wiggins, the true freshman, the intended receiver. Miami going for it on fourth down and 10. Just more than five minutes to go. Down by 13. Rozier. On the move. Takes it down. Won't get there. Chased down by Isaiah McDuffie, four yards short of the first down, and Boston College will take over on downs. Well, they were very cautious in how they rushed the quarterback on this play. They wanted to just kind of keep him in. Watch as Rozier takes off. Zach Allen actually is going to fall down. He's in position. He gets knocked down. But Isaiah McDuffie shows that ability to run and hit. That's what Jim Reed told us about that guy. He sure did. Just a sophomore from Buffalo, New York. Jim Reed said, if you guys do the Auburn-Alabama game, you do the Ohio State-Michigan game, the kind of athletes you see on both teams in that game, that's yeah. like Isaiah McDuffie. Yep. He could play in a big-time game like that. He's playing in a big-time game tonight with his team. Trying to get bowl eligible. Keep their hopes of Time a... Out. Miami. ACC. 32nd Title out. alive. Still have Clemson to come here to the Heights on November 10th. Time out, Miami. Tigers won the last three against the Knowles. A.J. Dillon for Boston College. Michael Pinckney to stop. Miami will use another timeout. Timeout. Miami. Their third and final timeout of the half. 32nd timeout. Of course, you can always watch that game tomorrow on the ESPN app from anywhere. It's on ABC noon tomorrow. 42 on the game clock. Let's take a Four look minutes, at the AP rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We saw Thank Clemson you. in person last week. We also saw when Syracuse gave them a mighty scare. Yep. But Dabble Swinney told us before the game against North Carolina State last week, my team's ready to take off. To me, Alabama and Clemson's talent level is yeah. above everybody else, and then you go down to the rest. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's uh, really pretty reflective of how I, I see it as well. I think Notre Dame has proven that they belong. LSU just continues to win against ranked opponents. You know, they've got Alabama coming up, which is going to be a heck of a ball game. And Michigan, I think, is maybe not the most talented team in the Big Ten. I still think Ohio State's the most talented, but Michigan's playing the best. I think they get better week in and week out. They have Penn State next week off their bye tomorrow. 
Michael Walker, the wide receiver, swung out of bounds, got enough for the first down. Michael Jackson, the tackle, apparently a flag on the near sideline. Obscured, from our view, by the folks on the BC Holding sideline. Offense, number 86, 10 yard penalty, third down. Huge penalty against Ray Martin. Clock should not be running, which is still running. They're going to have to reset the, the game clock as well, well. Bill Raftery, our pal, coach <laughs> basketball at Seton Hall, he said it helps you have a good priest on the clock. That's probably what they have here at Boston College. <laughs> Steve Adazio. He could get agitated. Might yeah. need to see one of those priests for confession after a couple of those words. Please correct the game clock to four minutes and 36 seconds. Four, three, six. You know, sometimes when you're a team that you, that your normal style is to play up tempo, and when you try to slow it down to eat clock, you, you just get a little bit out of sorts, right. a little out of sync. And I think we've seen that a little bit with BC, with some uh, penalties and some things where they've kind of been their own worst enemy here. Without that penalty, why he's so agitated, it's just about ball game over. Yeah. It's another new set of downs, no timeouts for Miami. Here's a guy, I think we both agree, you know, it's a program heading in the right direction. It wasn't long ago, they didn't win a game in the league. They went three and nine. Zach Allen's, I remember our first year. Yeah. Nobody thought we were any good to be where they are now. Well, and I think they have impressive. an identity now. I, I think they know what they want to be on offense. They know what they can be on defense, what they can recruit to. We always had great offensive linemen. They can recruit tight ends, so they'll play these multiple tight end sets. Dylan stopped. And he said, we think we can get a thrower. Of course, they have an excellent history of quarterbacks here. But here's the year by year. You know, winning seasons, but like all fan bases, they want more. There is a relatively new athletic director here, Martin Jarman. But I think he's got him heading in the right direction. Yeah. Now, that being said, uh, well, their schedule, a lot of his talent yeah. on defense is leaving. Yes. And the schedule remaining, I mean, yeah. six and two is nice, but you look at who they have coming up at Virginia Tech, Clemson here at Florida State, and then yeah. the Harvard of Central New York, Syracuse University coming here to wrap up the regular season. Uh, when's it going to be hard to come by? Well, I think that's why that six, getting to six tonight was so critical for them because uh, it, it is their best start under Steve. It does signify that they've got things going, you know, off of the momentum of last year, continuing this year, and uh, it was a winnable game. Grant Carlson punts. Didn't want to risk a return. They did an excellent job angling that one out of bounds. Highly scientific process here. I always love this part of football. <laughs> they have it rolling in Austin. Can Miami do it and do it quickly? Down two scores, just more than three minutes to go, no timeouts. Brevin Jordan swung out of bounds by John Lamont, who helped Miami stop the clock. It's going again now. Miami open with that loss to LSU, then won five straight for losing last week at Virginia. Flag down, Brevin Jordan fighting for everything. It's like they're gonna mark him a yard short of the first down. There's a holding penalty on the perimeter against holding Miami. Offense, number 26, 10 yard penalty, second down. I don't think it was 26. I'm at number six, Mark Pope, 26, is a defensive player. Backup safety, Gervin Hall. There's Pope ple uh, pleading his case. We talked about how important winning this game for BC, it was just as important for Miami. A great opportunity for them coming in here as well. Rozier checks it down to Travis Homer. And he gets swung forward by Isaiah McDuffie, gets him the first down to the 29, but under two and a half to go. 
after this game, Miami's got four consecutive games against ACC Coastal opponents. And they were still in a good position to get to the ACC championship game. Ooh, through a crowd, an incomplete, looking for Brevin Jordan. And yeah, they got help last night. Heading yeah. into last night, Virginia Tech was the only undefeated team on the coastal side, which is Miami side, a division the Kings won for the first time ever last year. Georgia Tech knocked off the Hokies. And uh, there's the schedule, as you said, remaining for Miami. We'll have to go to Virginia Tech. Jordan, a two yard game. They've been doing this all night, but 2.04 to go, throwing yeah. the ball two yards down by 13 isn't going to accomplish much. Well, and at this point, it's different because now BC is saying, hey, we're going to keep two safeties deep. We're going to rush three or four. We're going to we're going to force you to throw it underneath. I think they were choosing to throw underneath for most of the game. Now that's pretty much all that BC is going to allow them to throw. Maybe the clock some run snap the ball 14 seconds on the play clock before they even snap it. Wyatt Ray bats it down. This has to be a special game for him. He's from Boca Raton, which is the same hometown as Mark Rick. Knows some of these Miami players. And he doesn't get as much attention as Zach Allen, but one of the reasons each of them is successful because the other guys are exactly the other right. on the line. That's exactly right. I mean, if you want to pay special attention to one of them, the other one's going to bite you. Ray had a four sack game in your win at Wake Forest. Is that a catch? The BC sideline says no, and the officials concur. Intended for Jeff Thomas, Brandon Sebastian takes over. And Miami's hopes of repeating as Coastal Division champs take a big hit here tonight. Long throw, left hash to the right sideline. Sebastian gets in there and knocks the ball out. I'll tell you what, this BC secondary, even though they're kind of undersized, Jim Reed was right, right talking about them. They are feisty. And they're talented. Yeah. They've done a nice job, this coaching staff, building up the talent. And they've really benefited. You think of who they've had coaching the defense here this year. Don Brown, yeah. did such a great job here that he went to Michigan and is widely regarded now, if not the best defensive right. coordinator in the country, one of the best. Paul Pasqualoni was here. Uh, last year he went to the NFL back to the NFL with the Detroit Lions and now you have Jim Reed yeah. with 40 plus years of experience and he loves these players he said I'd be proud to have every one of these guys as my son and you know you look at how sound they were tonight you know they're always in the right place yeah. nobody's wide open there are no bust they're in their gaps yeah. you know it's a well coached defense and a huge win for Steve Adazio six and two for the first time in his six years as head coach here, the hug from Brian White there at the beginning, running back coach, who coached Ron Dane at Wisconsin, and we saw him in the hallway here to say, I coached Ron Dane, let me tell you something, this A.J. Dillon is a stud. <laughs> he knows one when he sees one, that's for sure. 149 yards rushing for Dillon, and Mark Richt, now five and three. And dating back to the end of last year, five and six in their last 11 games. So Boston College will win on red bandana night for the second straight year. 149 for Dillon on 32 carries in his first game back for a high ankle sprain. Anthony Brown threw for 152 and a touchdown ran for one as well. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, it's the first time under your leadership that your team is 6-2, and two, but what makes it more significant that it was done on the red bandana evening? Well, the bandana game means everything to us. You know, it represents Wells Crowther and his ultimate sacrifice for others to save others and and this university's motto is service for others so as a BC man he represented all this and our team felt so honored to be out here and to play this game and to be able to do this for the Crowther family and everything that it means so it's special 
A.J. Dillon was back in the lineup tonight. How does he help your team more than just running the ball and, and what it allows the defense to focus on? Well, I mean, it's just, you know, they got to put so many people in the box to stop them that a lot of other things open up for us. So it's it's really, uh, you know, just uh, he's one of the best players in the conference. And when you have a player like that, it makes all the difference in the world. So, but I thought our team played so hard today. They'll cross the board, our defense, our offense, our special teams. They just competed, and I'm proud of them. Coach, thank you so much. We, we, we like sharing this night with you, the Red Bandana night. Well, it's always I'll, special. I'll tell you what, I appreciate it, and it's great to be with you guys. It is a special night. It's a special night for college football. And uh, so I'm glad that we're a part of it as well, and thrilled to death that we're 6 and 2. Thank you, Coach. Take care, Holly. Thanks. And he's happy just to be healthy. He was very sick a week ago tonight. Actually spent some time in the hospital with some sort of food related illness. And there's the Crowder family. Jefferson Crowder. Wells dad. You know our friend and colleague Tom Rinaldi did a beautiful feature about Wells Crowder a couple of years ago. He wrote a book with Mr. and Mrs. Crowder. And he said, when I talked to Steve Adazio about Wells Crowther, he said, I always had a lot of respect for him as a coach. I came away with so much respect for him as a man. Yeah. Now, that's just not talk when he says that out. You know, yeah. He wants his players to learn the life lessons from the way Wells Crowther lived yeah. his life, not just on 9-11, but his entire 24 years. Well, and, and I'll say this, too. I mean, I know a little bit about BC and, and what they're all about, what this Jesuit school is all about. And not that there aren't other great schools, but but kids that play football here, uh, they're kind of unique because, I mean, they're obviously, they're good students. It's a good academic school. And I think they're guys who love to play football but aren't necessarily defined by football. And uh, certainly they played good football tonight. Well, it's a place where they don't tolerate nonsense. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to fall in line with the right. mission of the school and the football program, then you're not going to play here for very long. Yeah. And uh, they're a very good football team, too. They Not do. just good students, sure good do. citizens. Tough kids. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting. I think uh, they have enough down the road to give Clemson uh, at least a lot to think about. Yeah, could be fun. Great night of football just getting started. Utah versus UCLA still to come here on ESPN. For Holly Road, Tom Blackledge and our great crew, led by Phil Dean and Scott Johnson, Sean McDonough saying so long from Chestnut Hill on this very special night.